Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me as always is... I apologize for that stupid too, but that was, that was dumb. Uh, my name is Matthew, mad sound effect guy. That's an interesting thing. Yeah. Is that German? Well, it's actually Bavarian. But, oh, okay, um, cool. Yeah. Just checking. Um, anyways, um, today on the show, we are covering another short-lived, very, very short-lived, one-episode <laughs> TV series. <laughs> um, covering the pilot for The New Partridge Family, which was a... Modern update on the classic TV show from the 70s. Um, came out in t- 2005. So about 16 years ago here. Yep. And, um, yeah, it it was the first acting credit for uh, Academy Award winner um, Emma Stone. Yep. Yep. Academy Award winner Emma Stone. Academy Award, and also she was uh, credited as Emily Stone, so you get to see like a really obscure reference here, like when an actor has a different name. Yeah. Like, it's like it's kind of like when you find a band who has like an album, but they have like a different, like they re-release the album with like a different cover or whatever, and you're like, I got the one with the original cover, man. You know, I got the original Partridge Family remake with Emily Stone, not this bullshit from 2008 or 2019 trying to do the same thing. Yep. You know? Yep. They should have done an album, actually. Two songs that they did were pretty cool. Yeah, maybe they did do an album. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, yeah. I mean, I mean, an album for one TV episode, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, that seems pretty ambitious. It's it, it's possible. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what were your thoughts on this, Matt, first off? Uh, you know, it was very 2005-ish. Uh, it, I, I thought it was actually earlier, like 2001 or whatever, but it definitely had that kind of you know, early 2000s vibe to it, like, just like the the way people dress, the, the music, um, you know, it's like a very, like, I don't know, the early 2000s were like a really interesting time because, like, they kind of had some carryover from, like, the 90s, but there was, like, a weird form of optimism. Like, I don't know, it's, it's like a weird, anyway, so, like, I, I kind of liked it, um, to be honest. Um, yeah. I actually kind of, you know, I, I would probably watch a season of it, you know, if, it, if like a short season, if it was like eight episodes or whatever, I, I probably would stick through it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a interesting take. It's done in a, uh, in a kind of like um, reality TV style. Kind of like, I mean, that this was right around the time of the office mm-hmm. and um so it's kind of it's kind of interesting like that that was kind of the thing to do like be kind of a a uh you know mock reality tv show you know and shoot things like it's a documentary yeah and, yeah um Actually, I mean, I, when did The Office come out? The, I mean, well, the the original Office was already out, so they kind of had the influence from the British mm-hmm. Office, probably. Yeah, that was. Well, yeah, the American came out around the same time. Yeah. Plus, too, I, I kind of had a, 
almost like an Osborne's feel for it too, like the way the cameras looked. Oh yeah, because they weren't like they weren't great cameras, like from the office that oh, were, yeah. like the office was using regular studio cameras to make it seem like it was a documentary, but like. With the Osborns, it just looked like sometimes like someone's just filming someone's house. Like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think this is it, it was definitely capturing the Osborne sort of feel, which makes sense. Um, this was produced mm-hmm. by VH1. It was a uh, it was the continuation. There was a, uh, a, a like game show or, or reality show kind of like competition show called uh, Search for the New Partridge Family. And that's how they cast the show. Oh, wow. So, like, a bunch of, like, unknown people had... There was, like, a competition, kind of like an American Idol sort of competition show, <laughs> where they uh, they competed. I actually remember watching this when it was on for, like, an episode or two until I got bored with it. But it was on VH1. <laughs> and then uh, this was to be, <laughs> like, a, uh, a network television show either airing on VH1 or they were going to shop it around to other networks and stuff, too. And uh, all they ever did produce was this one episode. Yeah. So um, there's that. Um, yeah. So so basically, everybody that was in the cast, except for French Stewart, obviously, were contestants on that show. Because French Stewart is in this, and he plays uh, Ruben Kincaid, the mm-hmm. manager. Good old yeah. Yep. Um, yes. Uh, so if, if you're familiar with the original Partridge Family, he was a character on that as well. Um, yeah, this was uh, written by Bill Oakley and uh, Josh Weinstein and uh, directed by Alan Meyerson. Um, Alan Meyerson has directed... Episodes of the Larry Sanders show, which was another mock documentary type show. Mm-hmm. Um, he uh, directed some Knight Rider. Um, Police Academy 5. Episodes of Jag. Episodes of Judging Amy. Nice. Um, Joan of Arcadia. Ooh, good show. Um, Lizzie McGuire, Gilmore Girls, um, Allie McBeal, Boy Meets World, um, Ellen, News Radio, another great show. Yeah. He directed five episodes of News Radio, <clears throat> including one of my favorites called Goofy Ball, <laughs> and another one of my favorites called Rat Funeral. Actually, I like all the episodes he directed. So anyways, um, he, uh, <laughs> he's directed some episodes of Friends, Frasier, Diagnosis Murder, Baywatch, Parent. Jesus. Yeah. Um, Fame, the TV series. Um, yeah, his career goes all the way back to 1973. So Wow. Yeah. He directed, like, Love Boat, Bob Newhart Show, things like that. Welcome back, Cotter. A lot of things back then. So, yeah. Um, does not say if he's still alive or not, but he the last thing he ever directed was Judging Amy. Mm. TV series. Directed an episode of, three episodes of Ed, which was a good show. So, nice. Yeah. Great show. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yes. So, um... Yeah, he was born in 1940 in Edinburgh, Scotland, UK. Okay. So, um, anyways, um, and, uh, and, uh, Josh Weinstein, one of the writers, uh, he worked extensively on animated shows like, uh, The Simpsons, Futurama, Gravity Falls, Disenchantment, um, So yeah, he's he's got a decent writing career there. Um, Bill Oakley, the other writer, 
just looking up these things because this is interesting. He's uh, written for The Simpsons as well as Portlandia, um, Disenchantment. So it looks like they worked together before, so that's probably why they uh, worked on this together. So anyways, um, what happened in this episode here, Matt? Um, they uh, start off uh, just kind of practicing in the garage, uh, doing one of their their new tunes. Um, and they just they pretty much just play in the garage. They don't really have like any kind of like touring schedule or anything like that. And um, the 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 older brother he kind of wants to find them a gig, and he he kind of takes it upon himself to be the manager of the band, even though nobody, you know, gave him that role or whatever. Um, and, like, they kind of do, like like you said, like the office thing where they'll start interviewing, you know, people separately. So, like, the... Yeah, the, 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 I, the, the like, real-world talking heads sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I forgot some of their names, but, like, the, the one of the younger brothers is kind of like, you know, like, he... You know, he's got no brains or whatever. For you know, for example, how how could someone claim to be you know manager of the band when he can't even button his shirt correctly or whatever? And then like they cut to a scene where he's like you know trying to button his shirt when he's trying to you know secure a gig or like a record deal or something like that. And then like you got the one brother he he never talks, so that's like that's like his. Yeah, jam or his whatever like. chris chris is the younger brother and then we've got yeah um, and then we got danny is the uh is the middle brother so yeah yeah right yeah danny and then uh, trisha she just plays like a try is it trisha or tracy i don't remember um just plays a triangle that's like her only thing i think it's tracy i'm not sure i'm gonna look it up really it's quick here. Okay. <laughs> yeah it's tracy partridge um that was played by Hannah Lee. Um, yeah. So we got we also have okay, Keith Partridge is the oldest. Um, he's played by Leland Grant. We've got mm. Emma, aka Emily Stone, playing Lori Partridge. We've got uh, Anthony um, Skillman playing Chris Partridge. And we have uh, Suzanne Soul playing um, Shirley Partridge, the mom. So that's your partridge family folks yep mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's your new partridge family yep um so they kind of go like the, they, they pretty much interview like every single person and we find out that um the father whatever his name is uh he was like a roadie for the ario speedwagon and yeah he pretty much just wanted to keep keep doing that and uh surely he's like yeah he's one of the last um Wag what are they, wagon, wagon heads yeah something, something like that and which is like that's gonna be a rough life man like are, are really like in the mid 2000s like are you speed <laughs> like i mean what are you you playing like some county fairs if you're lucky maybe you know <laughs> like <It's> a, um, <laughs> so so are you speedwagon was in town back in the 90s mm -hmm. and um my mother used to work the cotton candy stand at the uh, Toledo Mud Hens games. And uh, she has an autograph from all of the then current members of Ario Speedwagon. Because they came and got yeah. some cotton candy from her because they went to a Mud Hen game when they were in town. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she, she's got this autograph that says, you make the best cotton candy in the world or something like that on it. And then it's signed. It's signed. It's, it's, hilarious. it's signed by all of Ario Speedwagon. So yeah. <laughs> so, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they have some pretty good songs, man. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Keep on loving you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, you know, of course they have the bus. You know, the family bus. Mm -hmm. um, that that was part of the episode was. Um, forgot her name already. Uh, Emily Stone, um, character, um, uh, Lori. Lori. She's trying to get her driver's license, and, you know, they only have the bus, you know, to, 
to practice with, which is it's kind of cool to think about it because then if you can if you can learn how to drive a bus, you can pretty much learn how to drive a car. So you know, it, it kind of got that extra challenge. You know? Kind of interesting though, because um, getting a car, a license to drive an automobile, and a license to drive a bus are two different licenses. Oh, I know. <laughs> so no, I know you got to get. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, bus is more difficult. But um, so so like while. Well, Older brother, I forgot his name again. Uh, he, he's off trying to find, you know, Keith. gigs for the. What's that? Keith. Yeah, sorry, Keith. He's he's at like a tattoo parlor, and he's like chatting up the daughter of the guy who owns the place, and uh, just basically that's you know that's where they're gonna play. And um, and uh, Danny is like he's sort of like the the marketer kind of guy or whatever, he he um, was trying to find a, a real manager for the band, not not Keith, because he doesn't really know what he's doing. So he says something like he go he goes to like the office where like I guess they sign bands or whatever. And he says something like, All you gotta do is ask for Stephanie because there's there's always a always a woman named Stephanie in one of these places. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, so like, yeah, he was at Ruben Kincaid's office, basically, like the the, uh, the, man, the yeah. management place where he worked. So yeah, yeah, and that's uh, then we get some weird racist thing going on where um, this dude's like Asian guy. He's like, I guess like the assistant to Mister Kincaid or whatever, and he sees Danny. He's like, "Oh, you're Danny. I had no way that you were, you're just a kid." And he's like, "I had no idea that you were." I thought that you were a non-Chinese person, or something. I'm like, uh, okay, like that's yeah. a weird thing to say as a kid. But uh, <laughs> what are you learning at home? <laughs> is this a really nice family, or is there like a secret? You know. Um, well, it does make sense. Sometimes you're not sure what somebody's ethnicity is on the phone, but still. Right, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And then uh, he's trying to like be tough and like you can't, you know, you can't come into Mr. Kincaid's office or whatever and then Kincaid starts screaming at him for some reason and then uh, I guess lets the kid in and they talk I guess or something I don't know and then the next thing we know we they bring the whole band to like audition inside the room with like that's I got a huge table and that's kind of weird to take a full band into like a conference room, but okay, that's whatever. And then, um, I mean, how would, how would you even do that? Like plug everything in and okay, whatever, I guess ignore the mechanics of all that. But, um, it's TV. They Matt. played it's all TV. We got to I know. I'm just joking. <laughs> I know. I, I do this when I want to make fun of something. I just get really literal about it. I know, it. But, um, no, no, I know. I'm just joking. I'm just saying it's just so uh, it's 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 in the TV world where you don't need to plug things in. You don't need no other thing. You don't need to plug anything in. Um, <clears throat> it just it just shows up. Um, so they like do this um, remake of I think I love you uh, like a more modern yeah 2005 e pop rock type of version and uh. And boom, they're gonna go talk about it now. Now, is this my interpretation or the same as yours? But was Mister Kincaid basically about to like say they sucked or whatever? But then they all agreed with him, or being they they all wanted to sign them, but he didn't, or something like that. I really couldn't follow that. Honestly, okay. when when I watched it, I wasn't sure what what his position on the band was. I didn't know. Yeah, what was either either yeah. by so it, yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard to say. They kicked they were they, Yeah. Do you want to take a quick break here, Matt, and then we'll talk about the rest of this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? 
Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guest every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry you can find us on apple spotify pretty much wherever you get your podcast hope to see you there And we are back. Okay, so, um, yeah, so, so, okay, Matt, come on, get happy. All right, so, um, <laughs> come on, get happy. So, so they, um, they, they have this part where, uh, everybody leaves the room because they want to talk about it, which is interesting. Um, and somehow Chris is still in there. <laughs> And they start talking about the band and stuff, and then uh, they're like, "Oh, we got to get Chris out of here, basically." And then, um, but see, I, I still don't know what I, I'm trying to figure out what Ruben Kincaid's uh, point of view was on this, like if he liked the band or not, because that was kind of not really clear. Yeah, I don't know. So, um, what uh, what happens now next, Matt? Um, they fire. Well, he says though. They'll get back to them, and Shirley thinks that means that they pretty much just gonna say no. So she just wanted to take the kids, you know, away from that because didn't want them to get rejected or whatever. Um, and meanwhile, they end up end up firing Mister Kincaid, and he's walking with like his box of stuff or whatever. I know it's I say or whatever a lot. It's interesting, yeah. but um, that's okay. He, they hit him. yeah, or whatever. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, I keep forgetting her name. Emily Stone's character, Lori. <laughs> Lori, God, mm-hmm. she's she's driving the bus and ends up hitting um, Kincaid. So they instead of like taking him to the hospital, they just take him to their house, I guess, and um kind of take care of him yeah and he's um they have him sleeping in like you know the bedroom with like all the kids apparently sleep in one bedroom or something that's yeah. interesting but uh because the house looks kind of a decent sized house so not sure why there would only be two bedrooms in it but hey what do i know and the tracy's like telling her telling him that he does she doesn't really know how to play a triangle correctly and he's telling her how to do it and that's supposed to be some like big moment between them i guess it didn't really kind of fell flat yeah well, um well, didn't he say like you got to hit it like you're hitting somebody you don't like or something or something like that yeah, yeah like you're yeah and then and so she keeps playing it and he's like all right that's that's enough for that bob you know eh, i don't know that part wasn't that great but um and then they wake up and he you know, says like, Oh, I made something special for you for breakfast. And they're like, All oh, right and it turns out it's just a contract. Like, oh, okay. And uh and he just decides, Oh, I'm gonna be your manager now. Uh see that's the thing I'm starting to wonder is if if he was basically like the naysayer of of them and then they fired him because they knew that they were gonna be a hit and that maybe he was like 
oh, I'm just going to scoop them up now and be the manager instead of the big company, you know, type of thing. Yeah. You know, before they, before they had a chance to, I don't know. Um, that's what I'm starting to wonder of what happened. But uh, they played the tattoo parlor gig, and, you know, the song's pretty cool. Everybody's into it, which personally, I don't think some of the people in there at the tattoo parlor would have been into like that kind of pop rock 2005 style. Just my uneducated guess, but like, oh, yeah, you know, people getting like dragon tattoos on their foreheads and, you know, like skulls on fire might not exactly be into like emo slash pop slash rock music. I don't, maybe I'm wrong, but. Well, no, Usually, that, that's how it is. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that most people that that uh, you know get those type of things are really into the Jonas Brothers. Yeah, I mean, who knows? It might be it might be a guy who likes getting <laughs> tattoos of demons ripping angels' heads off. Just loves you know bread. You know the band from the seventies. You know, or like you know who knows? I mean, people are they're you know they're people that are you know an enigma. They're you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you know it, 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 it's like when i when 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 you go from listening to your your like death metal in the car and then all of a sudden you're listening to miley cyrus <laughs> that's right miley, <laughs> i still love that song i know oh, party in the usa did it not in my head like yeah Moving my, I couldn't move my hips. I was driving, but um, you know, <laughs> otherwise I might have gotten to a car accident, and uh, that would have been the last thing I heard before I died was "Party in the USA," <clears throat> and then we just fall off the bridge right yes. there. But um, by the way, you got you guys got to check out the DJ Cummerbund re, um, mat, mashup of. Of puddle of muds, blurry, and and which is that's the instrumental part, and then uh, the vocals for "Party in the USA" by Miley Cyrus that has a lot of footage from um, you know the, the fascist um, police beating protesters last summer for against BLM. Anyway, and um, but it's it's pretty okay. much just taught you know kind of like a pretty much just like a symbol of what was going down last summer when, when we all almost lost our democracy. Anyway, um, sorry to get political there. And it's okay. It's in right. the middle of a Partridge family episode, but yes, well, that happens normally when you're talking about the Partridge family. Oh, I know. Of course you get into hardcore <laughs> Philosoph- <laughs> philosophical political discussion. Yeah, too. totally. Yes. Stuff that'll make, uh, you know, Ben Shapiro pull out his samurai sword and cut off your head or something. I studied the blade, man. Yep. I mastered the blade. I'm sure you did master the blade. Speaking, while you're speaking writing. of which, if, if you guys haven't seen this poster, look up Ben Shapiro samurai <laughs> sword. Um, <clears throat> it's when he's hilarious. Like, looks like he was like a teenager or something. And speaking of blade, he kind of looks like he wants to be like Wesley Snipes in the movie Blade yeah. or something. But yeah, it's just... <laughs> Blade Part Three, yeah. Star Ben Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, the um, so so basically at the the gig, um, the uh, the owner of the tattoo parlor decides he doesn't want to pay them, and uh, so Reuben Kincaid steps in and he basically makes them pay him, and uh, turns out they're getting paid like a hundred and fifty bucks. <laughs> And so Ruben got his ten percent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was a good gig. And then, uh, then what happened after that, Matt? Then, um, <clears throat> what? Oh yeah. So something weird happened. And um, <clears throat> okay, so this is two thousand five, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking. 2005. I was, you know, in my early 20s then. Yeah, I'm kind of old. And uh, mm-hmm. and I'm sitting there thinking, I don't remember this being that controversial of a thing back then, especially in Los Angeles. But so 
it turns out that their father is played by Danny, the original Danny Partridge yeah, from the Danny Bonaduce, like, the actor. Danny, yeah, and he shows up with his life partner, who happens to be another man, and like it, like had like this sort of minor shocking. And I'm like, well, what I'm thinking, what I'm 1985 maybe, but 2005. But what I'm thinking is it wasn't necessarily the shock of the fact that it was a same-sex couple. I think it was more of the shock of the fact that they didn't know he was gay. Oh, yeah, maybe. So, basically, like, that explains why he left, you know, Mrs. Partridge. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Well, one of the reasons, yeah. Yeah, and so, then... yeah. And I'm sure that they were going to develop that more into the second episode that we never got. Yeah, exactly. Thanks a lot for... You know, teasing us with one episode, and, and in, then like, oh well. In in the original Partridge family, uh, Mrs. Partridge was a widow. She wasn't divorced, so. Oh okay. Yeah, so that's you know, an interesting twist on things here too. Um, do you want to take our last break here, Matt, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about some uh, like trivia and reviews and stuff of this. Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. Need a new podcast to listen to? Well, why not check out the Super Podcast from the Super Network at supermarcy.com where we discuss films and pop culture and we do monthly fan-voted commentaries. We are available on all major podcasting platforms. And we are back making people happy here. So Mm -hmm. come on, get happy. Because a whole lot of loving is what we'll be bringing will make you happy. Yep. So anyways, um so yeah, um yeah, this was a kind of weird idea. We were talking about this after, on the break um that it, the concept was that it was a it was a uh reality show that led into a sitcom. So basically like the people audition were were like competing to be the people on the show. Um I remember at the time yeah. we they did have like things like this, like where they, they had like, um, I remember at one time there was like a show on television where people were competing to be the stars of Greece on Broadway. And, uh, hmm. they, they had other things like this. And I remember there was like also, um, I know in Canada they had shows like this too. Like a friend of mine on Facebook, she actually was one of the contestants. Um, she was actually a contestant on the Canadian version of the voice as well. Um, but she, uh, she was a contestant on this show where they were looking to cast like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. And, uh, they had like a, a few shows like this, both in America and Canada and other places, um, in like Great Britain and everything. I remember there was like some show with, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber where he was like casting people for a Broadway show. And I mean, th- they had other things like this where you know you become you win and then you become a contestant on the show or something. Yeah, I mean, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I mean, an actor on the show or a, or a or in on Broadway or they they had like a sort of like a. I mean, well, I mean, you also had like making the band, which was a little different, but you know, prior to this, where Lou Pearlman, the fucking loser asshole, who you know. <laughs> did bring us, you know, Backstreet Boys and in sync and stuff and then O Town was the creation of uh making the band. But we we did have a lot of things like this where there were shows where you basically were having contestants compete to become part of something bigger, you know. Yeah. And um yeah, cuz there was also like what else was there? there was like some other uh I remember there was like some uh some show where I think they were like they had like a thing where they were getting the new lead singer for In Excess. There was like a competition for that as well. They had a lot <laughs> of this stuff, and this was like all in the like late nineties, early two thousands. They had all these types of things, you know. So you know when when reality TV was really huge. I mean, it still is, but you know when it was starting to get real big. Um, yeah. So so the basically the premise of this was that they had the search for the per- Partridge Family, and they had people perform different songs in American Idol style and then you know because if you look it up you can actually uh, see uh, Emma aka Emily Stone performing the song Bitch 
which I've seen the video of, and it's pretty good. I mean, she's 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 good. She's not like outstanding, which is kind of interesting. I mean, mm-hmm. but then again, I mean, she she does have a decent voice. I mean, she went on to be in La La Land and stuff like that, where she sang. Um. Anyways, uh, so do you want to get into some trivia here, Matt? Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. This is uh. Only lasted one episode. Mr. Partridge was only at the end of the first episode, but previews for the second showed that, well, well, I mean, well, actually it was in the end because it was the preview thing, showed that he would be played by Danny Bonaducci, who played Danny Partridge in the original Partridge family. And then um, the only other trivia we have is that this was Emma Stone's debut. Um, so, uh... So, do you want to hear some reviews here, Matt? Yeah. Okay, so... Here is a... Review, a one-star review... <laughs> from, uh... Reno007. Um... What the... Bleep. Um... I'm not bleeping things out, it's just got, like, a bunch of little random... Symbols, so I'm <laughs> assuming they mean what the fuck. Anyway, so, um... <laughs> I, I think you can assume correctly. <laughs> yeah. Um, as Bill Murray's character said in Scrooge, gosh, that suck. <laughs> gosh, does that suck. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, I watched the search for the actors and actresses on VH1 and thought that it was a fun show, mainly because I liked seeing David Cassidy and the other people from the original show. But when it started uh, showing on VH1, I absolutely hated it, period. What was a cute show was uh pathetically reinvented to be a reality show (laughs) are you kidding me it had absolutely nothing in common with the original and the people portraying the characters didn't even look like the original characters because that really matters anyways plus the fact that that uh when they were uh doing the tests for the prospective candidates i found it funny i found it a funny thing to watch an american idol type search uh sorry but if you want to do a remake of a classic show like The Partridge Family, get known and or trained actors. Don't do this asinine talent search with wannabe morons who are hungry for their 15 minutes. I was uh, glad and, reveal, and and relieved when the show when this train wreck was derailed quick after its start. Hey, VH1, if you want to remake a classic show, hire regular actors and then you may have something there. Otherwise, you're wasting the viewers time and energy so this was written yeah this was written on february 5th of 2006 yeah so I, I emma just, stone emma stone yeah. won an academy award she's a wannabe moron who's been super bad mm-hmm. um like a million other like she was in that movie with um, ryan gosling i forgot the name of it um la la land yeah well she was in a couple movies with them um i'm yeah, La La Land, but there was the one with Steve Carell, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, forgot the name of that she was one. In the, but, uh, she was in the Rocker with Dwight, with uh, with um, Rain Wilson, Dwight from The Office. So <laughs> that's right, she was in that movie. Yeah, that's a really good movie, Rocker. The Rocker. She, she, she uh, was in Rain she was in the Zombieland movies. She was in you know she's in a in a lot of lot of movies, and she's you know yeah. she was in the Amazing Spider Man films. Um, she was in Birdman with Michael oh, Keaton. Yeah. Um, she's she's. She's an Academy Award winning actress. So, yeah. you know, just saying. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, here's another one out of 10 stars. This is from December 13th, of 2006. This is from Ray 280. And the headline is, I think I hate you, VH1. (laughs) How did they ever think they could top a cast that included Shirley Jones, David Cassidy, and Danny Bonaducci, who did return for this? Um, This was unwatchable, horrid. If you can't say anything nice about something on IMDb, you still have to fill ten lines. What... (laughs) is there to say oh i need a few more lines okay what? it stunk the original was better 
I can't believe they did this. Why? Why? Okay. I'm serious. I am DB. Why do you make me write ten lines about this abomination? My God. What is next? Sheesh. Uh, you know, okay. you, you could have just spent your whole life without actually commenting on IMDb. That's just another thing you can yeah. do. Um, so, um, there is one 10 out of 10 review here. Okay. Okay, this is from uh, N. Homer, and this was from uh, October 9th of 2007. And um, the headline is, Loved loved the show. I loved the show. It was so amazing. The people they got to play the Partridge, uh, Partridges did a wonderful job. They were good actors and actresses and singers. You really shouldn't compare it to the original. That's just wrong. The people are different and should be treated differently. This show rocked. You people need to see that the show was a good show, unlike the original. <laughs> they are two different shows. I think of them like that. Leland Grant is an amazing actor and singer. Leland, you rock. Shame you weren't in anything else. French Stewart is an amazing actor. When I found mm -hmm. out that he was playing Reuben Kincaid, I was mm -hmm. very excited. These people are amazing actors and deserve a congratulations for their efforts. I mean, so, I wouldn't go that far, but... Yeah. So, um, final thoughts here, Matt. Um... Would you recommend anybody watch this? Yes. Okay. It's fun. It's got that 2005 lighting that a lot of shows had. You'll recognize it if you watch shows from that era. Mm -hmm. The lighting's very bright. It was a bright time for a lot of people. So, like, if you watch, like, for example, um, was it? NCIS with no, I'm not sure what the name of it. Um, the dude with the glasses always plays the Who song. Yeah, no, CSI. after he does like a, CSI. Yeah, you watch CSI from like 2004. The lighting's like so bright. Like that's just, that was a style back then. Mm -hmm. And um, so you got that going on. You got literally bright light to kind of make you sort of give you a false sense of good mood just from the lighting itself. Then you also have French Stewart. I mean, come on, it's French Stewart. I mean, the guy's a genius. Yes. He, I mean, he should have been a, he, mm -hmm. he was, he was in inspector gadget too. Don't remind me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I just said he was a genius. Don't, don't bring up that. <laughs> 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 what I was going to say is he's been criminally, in my opinion, underutilized in Hollywood. Yeah. You know, Inspector Gadget 2. Come on. Right. He's French Stewart. He should be, you know, I, I have no idea why he wasn't as big as he, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, how that I mean he did um, have a huge career when uh, Third Rock was on. True. <clears throat> But usually, that kind of launches you further and further out, but yeah. maybe not. I don't... <clears throat> I don't know. Well, French Stewart, I'll write a movie one day and cast you in it, mm -hmm. if you're listening. <clears throat> if you'd like to be on our show, let me know, too, if you're listening. And if you're listening, that's very, that... that's very strange and weird. Well. I mean, it's a good thing <clears throat> if you are, I'm saying, but I'm just saying it'd just be really weird. Weird to know that French Stewart was listening to uh, our podcast. He might podcasts. be like, he might be like, you know, like thinking about like, you know, his past a little bit. And he's like, yeah, you remember that show I was on? And he sees like, we're like the second person that's reviewed it. And they're like, oh, that's interesting. So then pops open, well, not pops open. Um, that makes no sense. Plays the podcast. How do you pop open a podcast? Well, you know, when you when, when I'm whenever I'm hungry, I pop open a podcast, and I, uh, yeah. y you know, sometimes, you know, you try to eat just one, but you can't. You got to eat several podcasts, and yeah, uh, yeah you know, I'm, I'm sit there and I'll be like, oh, here's a, here's a WTF with Mark Maron, hmm, that's yummy, yeah. and then uh, oh, here's a 
Here, here's a um, you know, a, a behind the bastards with Robert Evans. Hmm, that's yummy. You know, yeah, that sort yeah. of thing. You know, I'm just shouting out to him. Here's favorite um, podcast. um <laughs> here's an inside of you with um, uh, Michael shoot, Ro- Michael Rosenbaum. And it's literally inside of you because you just yeah. ate it. So, uh-huh. uh, yep. <laughs> here's, here's a here's a life is short with Justin Long. You know, hmm, yummy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> here's a here, yep. here, here's a true crime garage. Mm, yummy. <laughs> yep. By the way, I just mentioned yep. some of the podcasts I listen to. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Here's a slash film daily. Mm, yummy. Um, anyway, so uh, the <laughs> check all those out, folks. Um, <laughs> the uh, the um, so so. Anyways, I mean, my thoughts on this is I think it was it was good. It was a good effort. I mean, it could have lasted maybe a season or something if they would have given it a chance on VH1 or something. But mm-hmm. I could never have seen this going to like you know airing on like CBS or something. You know, so that would never have worked. I mean, it, it would have been yeah. a good. It would have been a, been a good cable show. Yeah, like a VH1 show. Yeah, yeah. but I, I, I don't. I don't see yeah. it on regular network television. Um, I know that right now they are actually developing. They're they're in the process of developing another Partridge Family show. Um, I read the other day, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. You know, maybe they'll mm-hmm. maybe that'll come out. Maybe it won't. They 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 talk about these things all the time, and then they never happen. And my thing is, right. like, why do we have to remake and reboot everything anyway? So, you know, so it's like, come up with a good original idea. I mean, yeah, but then again, come on. But then again, you know, I'm 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 OK with some remakes and stuff, too. So, um, you know, so it, it's it's OK. Um, you know, whatever it is, it is. Uh, anything else before we wrap things up here, Matt? No. Nope. OK, well, um, folks, make sure you uh, check out our uh, our Tee Public. I just ordered a shirt from Tee Public of ours. Um, I got a All Too Real 2 shirt coming in the mail. I uh, I thought, hey, you know, I'll check that out and see how see how the quality is on it, because mm-hmm. I hadn't I hadn't gotten one yet. I just realized that the other day and I was like, I should get an All Too Real 2 T-shirt, you know? Yeah. So I can wear it out in public and people ask me, what's that all about? And you, yeah. guys, you guys should do the same, you know. I've also got some other then, uh, uh, other shirts on there and stuff too. So yeah. And pretty soon, you know, Gator Smoke is gonna put out a, an album. Yes, and, and we'll have you a know. Gator we'll have a Gator Smoke T shirt on there soon. <laughs> I'm still yeah. I'm still working on the design. I've just been busy and haven't been able to do it. But um, yeah. you know, we'll get that I'm on there. Still working on. Yeah, I'm still working on some songs. You know, mm-hmm. we're gonna get a we're gonna get a Gator Smoke album probably within a year. It might not be good, but you know. But. but but yeah, check our check our show notes. We got a link in there to the T Public. Um, it's it, you can get some really cool T shirts from from our from from Cullen Park Productions. You know, you can get them in different colors, different sizes, whatever you want. You know, so it'll be you know really cool. You can get you can get the designs on other things too on T Public, not just T shirts. They have other products on there. Um, it helps support the show, you know, because. We get money when you buy that stuff. Um, also, it, which which will help us keep the keep the lights on, you know, because we need lights to be able to see before we record. <clears throat> yeah, and um, also, uh, you know, another way to help us out is check out our Patreon. There's a link on there as well. Um, also, uh, give us a five star review over on Apple Podcast. I know I say this every week, and you know. Sometimes people do it, and that's. I thank you for that. You know, thank you for anybody that has given us a review. Um, I appreciate it. Um, you know, share the show with your friends. Be like, hey, Matt and Mike are funny, <laughs> or hey, Matt and Mike are insightful, or hey, I hate Matt and Mike. Oh wait, what? No. Um, anyway, so the <laughs> whatever it is you do, just. Do it. And uh, anyways, um, until next time, folks, be kind, rewind, wear sunscreen, <laughs> wear a condom, and bye bye Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast. 
A Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Hawes. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.